Right, to step back and have a little look at that. Is that level? No, not really. Let's try again. Now, normally I wouldn't put this much time and effort into getting something like this absolutely spot on, but today is not a normal shoot. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And this is gonna be a behind the scenes styled shoot, which potentially means that anything in my studio could become part of the final picture. It's definitely gonna include things I would not normally keep in my shots, like, oh, I don't know, light stands and crossbars and clamps for backgrounds, because having these in the shot is part of the look I'm going for. And that means I've spent a little bit more time getting them right. For example, I've made sure that all the little clamps are facing inwards. I'm using my nicest light stands. You get the idea. I haven't gone too over the top because I would like it to feel a little bit natural and I could completely style the entire room. But my room is mostly made up of white walls, plug sockets and heaters. I've got some Photoshop to do on those bits and I'll get to that at the end. But the general styling I'm going for is a sort of rustic vintage feel and that extends to the actual photography background itself. This isn't an off the shelf background, it's a hand painted background painted by me and Sam. So we bought some canvas and went to the local DIY store, bought a load of paint and just had a great afternoon putting paint on. We didn't really have a plan, it just kind of evolved and the end result when it dried is this and it is rustic. You can see creases and the edges are a bit rough and ready. That's all part of the look that I want to go for. I'm going to keep that in as part of the final picture. So I've got a few more tidying up bits to do. Whilst I'm doing that, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. Right, let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe is going to be the model for this shoot. And as you can see, she's themed to go with my vintage background. I'm starting with a traditional lighting position where I would normally put a light over to the side, raised slightly above Chloe's eye line. I've already metered this out. Have a look at this and see why this potentially is the wrong place for the light. Okay, Chloe, we're just going to take a test photo. Here we go. So the light on Chloe looks great, but there's clearly a light in this shot and more worryingly, the left side is darker than the right side of the background. And remember, for this type of shot, the background is just as important as the subject. So what I've done now is I've changed the light modifier to a strip box, but more importantly, I've changed the position. It's not at the side anymore, it's directly overhead and it's quite close to the background. So this is gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna put light on the background because I spent ages creating that. It's gonna put light on the front of Chloe because it extends quite a long way in this direction and any shadows are gonna be going down and equally spaced so the background should look much more even. At least that's the theory but there's only one way to test this and that's to take a test shot. So let's do that now. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And straight away, you can see that that is a vast improvement. The shadows do indeed look nice and even. In fact, I'm happy with everything apart from the lower half of the picture, which is a little bit dark and in shadow. To fill in the shadows, the easiest way would be just to get a reflector and pop it down by Chloe's feet. But in this case, that's not going to work because the reflector would be in the shot. And also, I want a little bit more control. So I'm gonna use a second flash. This is a Flashpoint Evolve 200. I've got it in a small softbox with a grid. And it's the grid that's really gonna help because it only needs to light the lower half of this scene. And that grid helps to give me direction to this light. It's around about one eighth power. The grid and the softbox do eat a little bit of the power. And that matches actually the same power for the key light. So let's just take a test shot, see how this goes. And that looks great. Now we have those even shadows, but they're filled slightly. We can see the background. This is all coming together really well. I think we're ready to do some shots. So Chloe, are you ready? Okay, let's take some shots. Here we go.
All we have to do is swap out Chloe's hat and maybe a jacket and she can be transformed from a vintage aviator to a vintage explorer. And of course you don't really want to miss the opportunity of taking some close head and shoulder shots because Chloe looks great, the background works well. What I've done is I've switched my lighting right back to where we started with a light at the side, which for this sort of shot, a head and shoulders half length portrait is definitely going to be the best place to put my lights. So Chloe, are you ready? ready? Okay, let's take a few shots like this. Here we go. The editing in Photoshop can be summed up really in three words. It's a matter of cloning, toning and texture. None of them are compulsory, all of them are optional and well the cloning bit is fairly straightforward. It gets interesting with the left hand side so I'm just going to select that area like that. I'm going to go to edit and copy and then back to edit and choose paste and that'll paste it in but to see it really I need to go back to edit and then go transform and flip horizontally. Now this will allow me to drag the left hand side over to the right hand side and basically that's really going to do just one thing. It's going to cover up the return of the wall and that light stand. It doesn't do a great job and it needs a little bit of, of aligning. Let's just see if we can just move that up slightly like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, then all I'm going to do is go to layer, layer mask, reveal all, get myself a nice big paintbrush and make sure that black is my foreground color and then just paint a bit of black on that layer mask which will help to hide the join a little bit. There you go, lovely. So that's covered up that wall area quite neatly. I can actually merge those layers down now. We can just flatten the whole thing down like that. To completely hide the join, I'm actually gonna put a bit of vignetting in here and I'm gonna do that with filter, lens correction and jump over to the custom option. And here I'm gonna find the vignette, which I'm just gonna stick all the way down, minus 100, low as it goes and click OK. Next it's toning. Now for that, I'm gonna use a layer style. I'm gonna come down to the little layer style icon. That's the circle that's black and white and choose color lookup. And here from the 3D LUT file, I'm gonna choose one of my favorites, teal orange plus contrast. Yeah, it is quite contrasty, but don't worry. I'm gonna take the opacity for that layer down to somewhere in the mid thirties. Something like that looks pretty much okay. I'm kind of happy with that. I'd also like to add another effect in. So let's go back to that little half black, half white circle and choose levels. And I'm just gonna take the blacks and just remove the real deep blacks by changing the output level and dragging that slider in or just sort of typing a number in and we'll, we'll just type in 20. So that removes some of the blacks from this image and it just gives this a little bit of a lighten up and a lift and again gives it a slightly more stylized feel. And finally I'm going to put a bit of texture in here because these walls are a little bit blank and for that well there's textures all over the internet. I'm going to use one from my own website gavtrain.com and find my textured backgrounds for flower portraits. Well, it's got the word portrait in, so why not use those? Once those are downloaded, I'm gonna open up the first one that comes in the pack and just go to select and all, edit and copy, go back to my main image and choose edit and paste. Now that'll paste it on, but it's clearly a little bit on the small side. They were designed for something else. So I need to resize this with a bit of uh, edit and free transform. And we're gonna stretch this out so it covers one side and then the other side of my image and then I can drag it down. I'm actually going to go with the top. There's two textures per sheet. Long story, I won't bore you with it now. So that covers that with a texture and the reason I like this texture is it's already a little bit blurred. That was how I designed them but it is quite um, well obvious. So let's see if we can take the opacity down to about 30 to 40 percent. Let's try something like that and then I'm going to change the layer blending mode from normal to soft light and that just puts a little bit of texture over the top of this but maintains the, the look and feel of the original image. 
And lastly, I'm just going to change the layer order. So I'm going to get the levels adjustment layer and drag it right to the top just so the levels adjustment applies to the texture and everything else below it. And there you go, with a few other tweaks and adjustments, there it is. There's my final picture completed. It's something I do on every single shoot. A behind the scenes picture is kind of essential because it reminds me where things were, what lights I was using and so on. And when I share those on social media, Sometimes those can be the most popular pictures I use. So it makes sense to extend that idea into an entire shoot. Maybe not every single time, but this was really great fun. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.